Lithium is the third element on the periodic table. But it's also so much more than that. Lithium and its compounds are used to make everything from cell phone batteries to airplane parts to pacemakers. And one compound, lithium carbonate, is also used in psychiatric medicine, most commonly to treat patients with bipolar disorder. If it's surprising that the same element used in batteries would be good for your brain, yes. <laughs> but the stranger thing is, even though we've been using this treatment for decades, we're still learning exactly how and why it works. Doctors started using lithium compounds to treat neurological conditions way back in the mid-1800s. Then, in 1949, an Australian psychiatrist named John Cade discovered that lithium carbonate in particular could treat the extreme mood swings symptomatic of bipolar disorder. Over the next 70 years, this compound, which we'll just call lithium from now on, went on to become a first-line treatment. And now, the World Health Organization considers it one of the world's most essential medicines. Having an effective drug treatment for bipolar disorder is great. Researchers estimate that around 45 million people worldwide have it. And while there are a few slightly different subtypes of bipolar disorder, it can cause someone's mood to fluctuate between depression and euphoric mania. Or between depression and a slightly less extreme manic episode. All in all, though, this can be disruptive to everyday life. And on average, it can also shorten someone's life expectancy by 9 to 17 years. So having a drug like lithium is incredibly important. But unfortunately, it doesn't work for everyone. A 2017 study found that only one-third of patients can be treated effectively with lithium alone. For everyone else, it either doesn't work or has to be paired with another drug to get results. And for the longest time, we just didn't know why. Or why lithium works, period. But finally, we've started to put the pieces together. For one, starting around the 1970s, research has gradually revealed that lithium can help stabilize magnesium levels in our bodies. Magnesium plays an important role in neurological health by helping electrical signals move from one neuron to another. And studies show that patients with bipolar disorder symptoms often have irregular levels of it. So the fact that lithium can stabilize magnesium levels means it could improve how signals are transmitted through the nervous system. But that doesn't seem to be the only way it works. Like, the authors of a more recent 2018 study discovered that while lithium may play nice with magnesium, it gets competitive with sodium. Normally, sodium binds with certain types of G-protein coupled receptors, or GPCRs, which are proteins found on cell membranes that help activate cell responses. Humans have more than 1,000 types of GPCRs, and they help regulate everything from our sense of taste to the levels of serotonin and dopamine in our brains. But in this 2018 study, scientists found that lithium can give sodium the boot. It turns out that when lithium binds with compatible GPCRs instead of sodium, it can deactivate them. But that can actually be a good thing. We're still learning a lot about how these receptors work, but we do know that they can be hyperactive in patients with bipolar disorder. And some GPCRs in our brain control levels of chemicals like serotonin and noradrenaline, which scientists believe are key players in bipolar disorder. So if lithium can inactivate some of these hyperactive receptors, that might be another reason it can treat symptoms so well. So overall, there are still some things to pin down, but we're finally starting to get a sense of why lithium works at all. And in 2017, another study came out that might even show shed some light on why it only helps in some cases. In this paper, the researchers focused on mapping how lithium works on a molecular level. And in doing so, they discovered that bipolar disorder can be caused by a protein involved in nerve cell communication, called CRMP2. In patients with bipolar disorder that didn't respond to lithium treatment, researchers found that CRMP2 was much more active than in patients who did respond to lithium. This matters for a couple of reasons. For one, by understanding how lithium interacts with these proteins, doctors could better predict predict which patients might respond well to lithium treatment. But also, these results could mean that bipolar disorder isn't always caused by changes to someone's genetic code. It could also be the result of how proteins like CRMP2 are treated inside cells. In the future, information like this could lead to the development of new drugs, and even diagnostic tests. And since it takes the average person eight years to get diagnosed with bipolar disorder, a diagnostic test could really speed things up. Of course, this wouldn't apply to all cases. And it wouldn't address other complications with diagnoses, like the stigma around bipolar disorder. But for some people, it would be a step in the right direction. Even though we've been studying lithium carbonate for decades, we've only finally begun to figure out some of its secrets. But the more we learn about this compound, the more we can understand how bipolar disorder works 
and how to develop effective treatments for those who need them. Thanks for watching this episode of SciShow Psych, and a huge shout out to the patrons on Patreon who make this show possible. Our patrons decided we should make SciShow Psych a few years ago, and now they're the ones helping us explore the complexities of the human brain. So to all of our patrons, thank you. And if you'd like to learn more about what it means to be a patron, you can go to patreon.com slash scishow.